question from Ro Arnold. Excuse me, David, I missed the, the opening to the press conference, so maybe this has been asked, and it, it all relates to the relegation as well. But um, uh, thanks for trying to clarify the excellent question from before. But in uh, 2022, we were coming hopefully to the tail end of a pandemic. We have a world championship on the other side of the world. Uh, there's still races in Europe, if, uh, and the relegation system is at play now, and it impacts, uh, for example, this competition uh, by virtue of uh, some teams not being prepared to release riders to do national team service. Uh, it's, a, it's more or less a coming together of a, a collective of uh, problems. Uh, is it, was it not perhaps better to delay the relegation to a, a, another year when the, when the pandemic was cleared, the impact of COVID is uh, not quite so severe. And uh, the World Championships are a little closer to traditional cycling heartland where the teams are based. And then just to follow on from that, I'm interested to know, based on uh, the, the reality of what's happened this year, where there's been numerous uh, races hugely impacted by COVID positive tests, uh, my experience in Wollongong this last week has seen that I've, I've had no tests, I've not been asked for my bio passport, I've uh, not seen any uh, particular measures in place to uh, address the, the, the conditions of the pandemic. Why is it that uh, Grand Tour organisers, for example, suffer immense uh, setbacks where the UCI races is, uh, from my understanding, very minimally impacted by COVID? So they are different in the questions. Um, for the uh, for the first one, uh, first of all, if you take the number of races that took really part during 2020, 2021, and 2022, because it's a three years ranking, we have uh, really more than 90 or 90 uh, percent of the races that took place. So we can consider that uh, this is not uh, this doesn't affect a lot the global ranking. It was 70% in the World Tour in 2020 and close to 100% except the Don Under and the, the Catalans race this year, but all the other races took place. So this is why we really have more than 90% over the three years period. So we consider that finally it was uh, it was good to, to keep the system. Uh, second, uh, second point, if you postpone the system from one year, then you have the teams that were expecting to join the World Tour uh, that will claim that we change the rules at the last moment and will be also challenged because when you modify the, uh, uh, the system, you have also always to think about the consequences. If you have only winners, why not? And then you have also a system where uh, Alpecin and Arkea at the date of today, Alpecin they will be in, uh, Arkea is still, uh, still question mark regarding the ranking, but at the date of today they are in. Uh, they will challenge in UCI if we uh, if we change the system. Uh, we have also uh, the the other thing is uh, the teams of second division that are well ranked. Uh, they also accept expect to be directly qualified for the Grand Tour. If we postpone from one year, uh, it will also affect them. And we already received also some letters. So we, we need to have a, a global vision. And I, I spoke also with Richard Plug as the president of IGCP. And uh, he, he, he is also uh, asked by some teams, but he, he also confirmed that within the IGCP, uh, they don't have a, a common opinion. Because of course, if you are well ranked, if you are uh, expecting to stay in the World Tour, or expecting to join the World Tour, or well ranked at the second division, you don't have the same expectations. And uh, that's not so easy, they, so they, they can't come with a common request because, uh, by unanimity because this is clearly not the case uh, within the IGCP because the interests are not the same. And of course we, we, had, a, we had some discussions, we had some requests, we also made a, a legal analysis of this, uh, what is the consequences if we change or not, and we, that's impossible to change the rules at uh, one or two months to go of the three years uh, system. Uh, second question was about the, the COVID. It's true that the protocol was very strong and we can wonder, this is your question, if at the date of today it's not too strong regarding normal life, I would say, outside where I agree with you, uh, we don't test uh, anymore except for some uh, specific countries. So we agreed that it will be a, a, a light uh, 
a light process for, for next year. Um, but the, the thing is, uh, there were also some discussions in between Professor Bigar, our medical director, and the representative of the doctors of the teams. Because it seemed that if we have the COVID, you, you or myself, except if we have some disabilities, but otherwise we'll suffer a bit, but uh, you will normally survive. Uh, but if you are uh, uh, doing, you know, six or seven hours uh, very strongly in a bicycle, it can have uh, some effects that are not the same as a normal, uh, even if they are in good shape. So, and it seemed that the doctors agreed on that, the team doctors and the UCR doctors, and this is why it has been uh, decided to to keep, I would say, the, the, the COVID protocol, but also to adapt the COVID protocol. The COVID positive test is not necessary, doesn't necessarily mean that you will be excluded from the race. But then they will see what, uh, in which condition you are, what is the level, and so on, and it's a medical decision. But what I also saw is uh, most of the riders that uh, were excluded were not specifically by the, by the test of the organizer, it was directly by all the tests of the teams. So the teams, both of them, they took themselves the responsibility. But I'm, I agree that uh, uh, for, for next year, it must be also under the responsibility of the team doctors to check if the rider is able to ride or not, uh, and, and to have a protocol that will be more close to the reality of, uh, of today.